guys, it's Lynn here. Hope everyone is having an incredible day. Now guys, got a little bit of a potting up video for you today. And um, what I'm gonna show you, I've got a mixture of a few different things going on here. Now, as a lot of you may be aware, um, Hans and me have recently gone through a um, large um, house move, <laughs> as in moving 2,000 plus cacti and succulents. And that was probably about five weeks ago now. And um, before we left, we had a few plants fall out of their pots previous to the move, and then a few during the move, and then a couple that um, weren't doing too well, so we had to treat as cuttings, as you can see here. And we just have not had time, obviously, because of the, the house move has been so, it's been cr oh, crazy, guys, as you can see. Priority was getting all the plants put away into the polytunnel. And there's still so much left for us to do in the polytunnel. We have to sort out the high humidity in there and heating, how we're going to heat it and all these things going on. But um, I've got a bit of an afternoon break this afternoon. So I'm going to pot up the ones that are desperate to be potted up now. We've got a few different plants. First of all is this one here. I just moved the stand across and you can see. This is um, the Pyloceria scunelli. Isn't it gorgeous with these little arms coming out? Now, this actually was treated as a cutting last year and it did really well. It's got the roots. I would just show you up here. As you can see, the roots are there. So it's rooted and it fell out of its pot during the, uh, the move and Five weeks ago now, the move, we just not had a chance to pot it up yet. So this is the first opportunity. Just going to go back into, into fresh soil and pot it up again. And little mother of thousands that fell out. <laughs> and a couple of cuttings that snapped off in the van. As you can see, this is um, Cleistocactus winteri or Hilde winteria or Espinus, whichever word you prefer to use. The Cleistocactus is the more recent name. They keep changing the names all the time. And then we have um, this little one here, little Trichocereus. Um, that was a lovely gift from my wonderful friend Shane, Shane Walsh, so thank you. And it's doing really well, but it's a little bit, it's coming a little bit loose in the pot, so it needs to be repotted up again. That was just during all the house move. And, um, but other than that, now these, nothing to do with the house move here. This actually rotted before we left, about two months before, not had time to do anything with it. Tr had to treat it as a cutting, as you can see there. This is an Oreocereus, um, Trolly, um, I think it's pronounced. And it's one of the gorgeous serious type cacti with gorgeous bright orange spines. And it sort of went, it hadn't exactly rotted at the base, it just went a bit strange at the base. So I decided to treat it as a cutting. And this was a good couple of months ago now, and it's completely calloused over, as you can see. And by the way, it's sometimes normal when they do callus to go a little bit orange, like a rusty colour. As long as it's not soft or anything like that, it's not rotting. It's just part of the natural coloration as it hardens off. So um, don't panic if you do treat a cut in and it goes a bit orange. That's a normal sign. As long as there's no softness and it feels hard, it's calloused over. So that's ready to pot up now. Now, I wouldn't really recommend potting up cuttings during this time of year, but um, because I'm going to be keeping them all bone dry and they're going to be kept in the grow room upstairs and not in the polytunnel, um, they should be okay. So uh, we have extra plant lights going on in there, so it's not going to be an issue. And these actually are three cuttings here. In fact, I'll just turn the, um, just move the plant stand, uh, move the stand here a minute, as you can see. Now, these are actually from my Mammillaria spinosima cactus. I've got couple of these and um, they came very badly down with um, mealybugs and the one I managed to treat with the alcohol and managed to go but this was another one that unfortunately the mealybugs were so deep rooted at the base that it was just easier to treat the plant as cuttings and um, rather than try and treat it and try and get them all off it was just nightmarish plus they were going into the roots so it's just easier in that case to treat them as cuttings as you can see there's no sign of mealybug at all left on this plant so um, we treated it as cuttings, put a bit of um, sulfur powder on. This was a couple of months ago before we moved. And as you can see, it's completely hardened off now as anything. So nice hard callus. And again, we're going to be potting these up rather than putting it into one pot, individually into quite smallish pots because you just want to get them to root in there and kept dry, obviously, over the, um, the autumn and the winter. And then I'll start to... Treat it again, a um, tiny bit of water, come the spring, as soon as I see signs of new growth. And that's really all I'm going to be doing today, guys. So, um, 
rather than bore you, because it's going to be a long video if I have the just continually running on, I'm going to just do it, show you a little tiny bit of how each one starts off, how I'm going to pot each one up, and then um, I'm going to then uh, show you the finished result with them all. So first of all, I think I will start off with the, probably these ones. And what I'm going to be doing, obviously, we actually make our own cactus soil. I'll just show you here. Now, what we do, um, I prefer to use a loam-based potting soil. As in this case, I like to use um, what they call John Innes, or Innes, number two or three. If you're potting up cuttings, you can even use number one. Um, basically, it's a loam-based, soil-based compost. And you can use whichever, any well-draining soil. But I personally don't like to use peat-based soils with cacti. Um, the reason being is that I just don't like the texture. I find it dries out too fast and it's difficult to re-wet again. Plus it seems to attract them really horrible fungus gnats and they can be a real nuisance. Um, so soil-based compost I prefer and it's, it's also weightier, which I like. I just add extra sand and I use extra, either grit. If I can't get hold of grit, I'll use perlite. Now, I've made a video on how to make cactus and succulent soil. And I go into detail there what I like to use, and that's basically what I've used here, except I've substituted the grit with the perlite because I couldn't get hold of any grit on this occasion. But basically, whichever you prefer to use. And um, not only is it more economical, but you know exactly what's going into it. So um, links up above to that. <laughs> and um, now what I'm gonna be doing then, obviously, I mix it up with the um, extra perlite and the sand, horticulture sand, and Filling it up. Now everyone knows how to sort of pot a plant up. I'm just showing you this. And I said I'm not going to show you the way through. I'm just going to show you the first one I do here. Obviously, like so. And I'll just make sure that you can see what I'm doing here. Pick the one up. And that obviously, it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of a sulfur powder. It's not going to matter. You can use rooting hormone powder. You don't even have to use anything as long as it's calloused. Or you can use cinnamon powder. The reason why I put powder on the bottom of the cuts is it helps to keep fungal uh, disease at bay because we do live in a very humid country island um, so you know if you live in a normal country there's not so much humidity you don't really have to worry about putting powder on the bottom of it this is just something I like to do and um, as I say um, potting around there and um, just slightly tucking it in just to get as I say this is going to be overwintering in the plant room with grow lights um, which you don't normally have to do when you're overwintering cacti. It's just that I want these to sort of form roots over the winter. So that's why they're not going in the polytunnel. They're literally uh, going into the, the plant room. And um, stay tuned for a video coming up soon, guys, of me and Hans setting up the grow lights because we're going to get them up in the room because we're lucky we have a south window, but it's still sort of quite dark as a lot of the plants are going away from the window. And because the grow room is going to be used for growing our, our seedlings and our cuttings rather than overwintering, um, we are going to be obviously keeping that as a warmer temperature and using grow lights to substitute the lighting um, because we want them to sort of grow and like overwintering like normal cacti. So um, as I say, we've got loads of seedlings up there. So uh, they're going to thrive. But stay tuned for future video when we set the lights up. We just haven't had chance to really bless ourselves yet, yet alone set the lights up. <laughs> but stay tuned for that. That's coming soon, guys. Anyway, gently tucking it around there. That's the first one potted up. And um, as I say, I can brush that off when it's dried up there. So I'm going to keep this completely dry now until the spring. And um, clean it. That's the first one. And obviously I like to label all of my plants to say what they are. And a good tip, guys, um, everyone knows about labels, but I like to personally write in pencil. And the reason being is that you can reuse them over and over again. It saves money and it also saves waste rather than using it in pen. You can recycle it over and over again. And by the way, guys, I know you're not daft, but... Hans actually taught me this because I used to write the names down, going that way, stick it in the pot. You could never really read what it was. Um, links up above to a video Hans has made on the correct way to label um, plant labels because if you do it that way and put the label in, stick it in, you're going to be able to read it. Sounds daft, but it's a, it's a good tip that I learned from him and I've done it ever since. So um, that's a good little tip there. So that's the first one done. I'm going to do all the other three and then I'll show you the finished results. There you go, that's all the three mamillaries all nicely potted up, so that's that done. And they're going to be going upstairs, obviously got them on the, the little tray. And uh, 
that's that. They're all going to be kept completely dry now until the, the spring again. And then these are the Kleistocectus winterii cuttings. As again, these fell off the actual big mother plant when we was moving house. They're just knocked off in the van and uh, completely dried up, calloused over. So we're going to get potting these up again. Same procedure, so easy. Literally, um, there, stick in each side like so. And um, the soil all around. Easy, easy peasy. That's it, just gently tucking it in. Don't want to tuck it in too firm where the plant can't breathe. You want it to have, be loose enough to form roots, but obviously tucked in neat enough where it's not going to fall out of the pot. And as I say, always like to use loads of uh, well drainage soil, extra sand, extra perlite, whichever it is to, to make the soil well drained. And uh, that's the secret with cacti and succulents. You just don't want the soil where they're going to sit damp for long. Um, other than epiphytic cacti, they can take a lot more damp and humidity conditions than the desert types. And especially at this time of year, I'm letting them all dry out totally. Um, no watering for any of the desert cacti from now on. Um, they like to be kept dry to overwinter. Watering not only encourages them to grow a bit spindly because of the lack of light at this time of year, but also can cause the plant to rot if they're dormant, which they will be getting ready to go into their dormancy now, um, winter's approaching. So that's that one done. Ha, that was quick. And uh, now the next one is going to be this one, the Oreocerius Troli. And um, as I say, that's the pot there. It's not big compared to the size of the plant, but as I say, it's got no roots yet. So you just want to, just want to treat it as a cutting to encourage it to root. As I say, same thing again. Um, there, gently lifting it up and uh, planting it in like so. Gently pushing it in, give it a little bit of a, bit of a twist around. So it's in there. Again, let's move this forward so you can see. And then um, turn the soil around on here. All around the edges. So with cuttings, you really don't want to force them down into the soil you really want to encourage them to send out roots searching for searching for um, water I should say moisture as I say this time of year normally this plant will be going into the polyton or with the other ones because it's going to be going through its winter dormancy but I actually want to encourage it to grow so it send roots so it's going to be going up into the plant grow room upstairs and I say gently tuck it down like that just enough to Loosely get a bit of soil in to encourage it to send out roots and just enough so it's going to stay stay in the pot. Now tap it in. And that's that done. That's that one. And uh, get in there now. And then the next little one is a little tiny mother of thousands. <laughs> this is one of the... Well, there's tons in our pots. They just keep falling off the main mother plant. But um, they're always lovely to give away to friends and things like that. So nice little plant. So pop that up. Like so, again in here. And the only reason why I'm showing this all the way through, guys, is because everyone says, oh, I like watching repotting videos. And I love watching people's repotting videos. So, uh, as I say, sorry for the long video, guys. But <laughs> it's easier sometimes than just having to keep stopping and starting and re-editing and editing. And now, um, this one here is... I'll just turn this around so you can see what I'm talking about here. This is the um, Pilocerius Scunelli. Isn't he gorgeous? He's like one of, he's almost like a miniature saguaro, isn't he? He's gorge. Now, um, <laughs> he lost his roots a couple of times. Apparently, like Pylocerus aren't winter hard, aren't cold hardy. We've had to bring all ours in the house. We were overwintering ours in the, in the spare room, keeping them all bone dry until the spring again. Um, but this one particularly is not at all. It's, cold hardy and as I say the biggest problem in Ireland here is not the cold because we have very mild winters it's the damp and that's the biggest problem and I think there's been a problem with this plant in the past it's been kept in the conservatory where it's very high humidity unfortunately and um, sort of kept you know probably at about five celsius but as I say not a problem normally but pilocerus do like to be kept at a bit higher temperatures than uh, a lot of the normal desert cacti and I'm just removing some of the old soil that was on it previously and as you can see it's got great roots I'll just show you 
It's good for roots, so it's been sending out roots while it's been in that little draw, which is great. So this is just a case of going straight back into the pot again. And um, here we go. To be, um, so this has already got roots, so this isn't going to be treated as a cutting, but it is going to be kept dry completely now until the spring, kept into the into the spare room with the other pyloceriasis is upstairs. And that's that. And here, now just again turn that back up again so you can see what I'm doing. And um, then putting the soil all around just to support it. And uh, it's great here. As I said, I'm normally doing this into the in the polytunnel, but it's a bit overcast today, and it's quite chilly, and it's just easier to do it in here on the on the spare table. So um, that's that. And again, gently tucking it in. Just so you can see what I'm doing here. Gently tucking it in, so you want to treat the plant so it's not going to fall out the pot. You don't want to put it in too too firm where the plant's not going to be able to breathe with its roots, and then all the soil around there again like so but if you wonder what that noise is the heating keeps coming on and off in the house it's a big a weird noise going on just uh, ignore it <laughs> and that's that one done so that's another one done there and then um, that's that and then last but not least as guys you know when it comes to plants there's always so much to do this is one that just got a bit, it came loose in its pot, but um, just literally needs to be squeezed out again. Got a great root system on it. So um, this is literally going to be just repotted up again, then put back into the polytunnel. Look at that, guys. Great root system, it just got a bit wobbly, so put a bit of fresh soil on it as well there. And uh, potting back in again. Actually, put a bit too much there. I shall give him a bit more. Actually, I might give him a bigger pot, actually. There's another pot here. Give him a bit of a bigger pot because he does need to be repotted, so why wait till next year? He's going to be kept dry anyway, so it's not an issue. As I say, when it comes to repotting plants, I always recommend spring, summer, or early autumn, which it is sort of early autumn still now. But I personally would normally be repotting plants, usually in the spring by choice. But as I say, keep them dry. Um, if it's desert cacti, that is. And you shouldn't have a problem with repotting them during even the winter as long as you, you keep them dry and you do try and do as little damage. The reason, we, the reason why you normally keep them dry after repotting cacti is that it's sometimes difficult not to damage some of the roots when you're potting on. And cacti are very prone to rotting, even in the, their active growing period. So I personally, even in the middle of summer, if I'm repotting a cactus, I tend to leave it dry for a couple of weeks before I start to water it again. Again, that's a personal choice. Um, you don't necessarily have to do that if the plant's actively growing, but as I say, always safe than sorry. And there you go, so that's the lot. <laughs> as I say, I've just got to write all the labels out now and put the labels on them, and that's all I have to do. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the little bit of a potting up video then. I didn't bore you too much, but... Um, Thanks so much for watching, for you guys who watched it all the way through. <laughs> and I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness, and tons and tons of plant power. Until the next video, guys. Bye.